Hi there, this is the fourth video in the series for Access 2007-2010 and in this video I'm going to continue doing what we did in the first three videos which was to create tables, forms, queries and reports but I'm going to add an extra element and introduce the notion of relational database. So in this example I'm going to create two different tables so just to show you what it is I'll just show you this document I created. So I'm going to have two tables. One table will have these fields, which will be like a list of book and DVDs that I have. So it has the list ID, which will be like the primary key, the title, whether this is a book or a DVD, what genre it is, is this suspense, drama, com romantic, comedy, and synopsis is like you just want to make notes about what the book or DVD is about. I'll have another table which will be a list of people who borrowed my books or DVD so I can keep track of who's got what. So I'll start with the borrowed ID then there will be a field called title. Now this title will be reconnected to this title because I've already typed it once so I don't want to type it again so this way we'll be creating a relationship between the, both of them. Then we have first name, last name, telephone number, the date it was borrowed and then the, whether it was returned or not. So let's start. So from access, uh, this I'm just going to call it book DVD list. I'm just going to click on the folder button here so I can save it in access folder and in the book DVD list I'm gonna save it and I just have to click create so right away it brings me to the table in the data sheet view so I'm just gonna to go to the design view it's gonna ask me to save it this one I'm gonna call my book DVD list so the first field I'm just gonna call it list ID you can call it whatever you want I'll leave it as auto number. Remember, data type defines what information you can enter in the field. So by choosing auto number, I'm allowing access to do this for me. I, I'm not, I don't have control over creating my list ID. So to automatically do one, two, three, four. If you wanted the control in your hands, you could choose number or you could choose text if you wanted to put a combination of words and numbers and this already is set as a primary key it's already there after that I'm gonna have a field called title so this will be the title of the book or the DVD type because I wanna have like I just wanna say whether this is DVD or is it a book and if I want I can create a look up which is like a drop down list so I can click here choose look up wizard choose I will type the values I want click next and in the column here I'll type my list you can type as many things you want I'm gonna just hit finish I can hit save after the type I'll have a field called genre and I'll create a lookup even for the genre I will type the values I'll be going a little fast in this because I've covered a lot of the materials in the previous videos if you want you can go back and look at it so I can have horror, sci-fi, kids, oh, I entered by mistake, Let's go back, action, romantic, or whatever else you can come up with. Hit next and then finish. So this is good enough, just a small little list. Now I can hit save. Now if I want to type, I have to go to the data sheet view. So I'm going to click here. Now up here I can start typing. So say the title I'm going to make up. I'm just going to call it Matrix 1. I'm going to make stuff up like that. And this is a DVD. And I can call it sci-fi or action or whatever. Oh, I forgot the synopsis. So I can go back to the design view. Put a field called synopsis. And because I need to type as much as I want, I have to choose the data type memo, 
so that I can talk as much as I want. So there is some field. Now I'm just going to close this table. Now instead of entering another table, I'm going to do it in the form. So I'm going to go to create, use the form wizard, add all the fields that I want, click next. That is fine, the defaults, next. That is the name. I'll just put the word form next to it, hit finish. And now if I want, I can click this button here on the bottom for new records. Or if I just come here and I hit tab, it will go to the next. I'm just going to keep typing now. Okay. I'm going to pause the video and I'll just type as many as I can so I can show it to you. So I finished typing some records in the form. I'm just going to close the form and I'm going to double click on the book DVD list table and there it is. So I've just typed out some names with some books and some DVDs and some genres and things like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and create my second table which will be like the borrowed list. So I'm going to go to create table. Go to design view. Give it a name. Borrowed list. Click OK. Now the first one I'm just going to call it borrowed ID. Auto number is fine. The second field is title. Now this title I want to link it to the title on the book DVD list. So I'm going to start the look up wizard. Now if you look at the first option it says I want the look up field to get the values from another table because I want to connect it to another table. So I'm going to click next. Now that field is in the book DVD list. It is already highlighted. Click next. Now I want to connect it to this list ID and also the title because I may not I may not uh, uh, recognize the name of the book from just the ID. I need the title. So I take both of them. Click next. Click next. And it says it's going to hide the key column which is the list ID. So I just see the title. Next. And I finish. Ask me to save. I say yes. The next field could be per first name. If you just type, try to type name, it will not allow you to use the, just the field name as name because somewhere Access is using this in its programming. You cannot even use the field name year because Access is using it. Telephone number. Remember the telephone data type is text because I want to set the input mask and I start the lookup the input mask wizard and I choose phone number click finish hit save date borrowed the data type will be date and time I can set the format like I want to see the dates in this way and the input mask I want to enter in this way too. So you can choose, you can enter it in the short date or this way. It's up to you. Finish. Same thing for date returned. Choose date and time. I'm going to be consistent. Okay. Hit save. I'm going to go to the data sheet view just to see. Now when I click in the title, I get the drop down list and here's the list I had typed in the previous table. So now I can just pick here and then start typing. I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to create a form and enter all this information. Just quite a sum of the records so I have some information. 
So I'm just going to show you how to create the form again. So from create form wizard, I choose borrowed list because that's the form I want to create. I add all the fields. I can remove the borrowed ID if I didn't need it because I'm not going to be able to type anything in there anyways. I can click next, next, borrowed list form, click finish. Now I can continue entering information here. So I went ahead and entered quite a few records like almost 12 of them in my form and I'm going to close the form and I'm going to double click on the borrowed list table and there is the list I've created. I've left some of the date returned empty so I can show you what will happen when you do certain things in the query. So I'm just going to close this table and I'm going to look at some queries now. So I go to create query wizard simple query click OK and I want to use the borrowed list for the query I can add all the fields if I don't need the borrowed ID I can remove it I click next click next and that's fine I can change the name later up here and I can hit modify so that I can modify the query before I see the results. Now if you remember from the previous video I showed you things about criteria and things like that. So say if I want to do a query where I just see some area code starting with 905 I can type the word like 905 and then the asterisk and if I hit the run I only get the results matching 905 area code the 905 and the asterisk means match the first three after that I don't care it's like a wild card so I can go back to the design view I'm going to remove that and what I want to do is in the date returned I'm just going to type the word is null null means empty so that I get the results of people who haven't returned the book or the DVD and I click run now these are the books or the DVDs that have not been returned. I'm going to hit save. I'm going to close this query. Now there's the query. I'm going to right click on it. Rename. And I'm going to call it query not returned so that every time I run it I'll get the people who haven't returned the book or the DVD. Now I'm going to double click on the book DVD list table and if you see there is a plus sign next to each and every one of them that is because of the relationship so you see when I click on the plus sign it shows me who's borrowed the book or the DVD and whether it's returned or not so each and every file has that and this is because of the relationship we created and this is what is known as a relational database I'm just going to click close here and I'm going to go to the database tools here and I'm going to look for the relationship button so in the database tools there is the relationship button when I click on it and it shows me I've got two different tables and there's my relationship the line if I wanted to remove it I could just click on it you right click on it and hit delete if I wanted to get rid of the relationship so this shows me picture in a picture how my tables are set up say yes okay. now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a report based on this information that I have so I just I'm going to use the rep report wizard now say if I just wanted to create a list of all the book and DVDs I have then I can just use this table I add all the fields if I don't need the synopsis I can remove it click next 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 portrait is fine in this case because I don't have too much information and I just add the word complete next to it so because it's a complete report click finish and this is my report right here and if you remember from the previous videos, 
you can edit the layout. So I'm just going to close this. I'm going to go to the view option, layout view. Click here on the title. And also on the bottom, hold the shift key, click on the bottom part. And reduce just a little bit so that I can get away from this information. Now it looks a little better. I can look at the print preview. And there's my information. I can close it and I can close this. Say yes to saving it. Same way I can go back to create, report wizard and if I wanted I could create the borrowed list which is the list of all the people that have borrowed my, in my books or DVDs. Now if I did not want to I could just run the query not returned. Add all the fields if I don't want something I can get rid of it. Click next, next, next. I can make it portrait if I want it. Click next. And if I want it I could put the word report not returned. Hit finish. Now I only get the names of the people who haven't returned the inf material. And you see right now it's like everything is jumbled up, so I'll have to go to my close this print preview, go to the layout view, and I can start making some room here. Um, if I don't need the last name, I can just delete it, click the telephone number, and I can just move it so that I can make room for the other information. And there is my borrowed date. I can expand it. And this is the returned information which is empty. So now this looks a little better. I can spread them up a little bit more if I want it. look at the report view, print preview, so looks a little better. So you can print that report and you can call up the people who have written your material. Say yes. Now in the way of creating even with the forms or the report you can mix fields from both the tables. I can go to report wizard. Now if I want it from the borrowed list I can add all the fields and say I remove the ID uh, the last name now if I want it from the book DVD list I could add the field type so now you see I've got one field from one table and the other fields are from the second table so I can click next and as you can have as many fields you want next 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 I can make it landscape, next, and finish. So now you see, it also gives me the type, which is DVD or book, that column from the first table. So, and now I can go back and close the print preview and go to my layout and just make the adjustment as I want it. So this is access pretty much in a nutshell. Um, hope it helped you get going and if you wanted to learn something more you can go grab a book from the library or buy it uh, and you can find more information uh, this information is good enough to just get you going and maybe pass a test um, when when something comes up but um, there is a whole lot to access and it will be difficult to learn something in this way but you got a foundation now and you can go and learn more things. So just one more thing up here. If I am in the layout view, the borrowed list, that's the title. I can change it to whatever I want. I can move it to the center. I can format it to different colors and whatever else I wanted to do with it. So you have control over that.